Good morning, and welcome to our social distancing Easter of uh, 2020. Um, it's kind of strange to uh, not have a lot of you here today, um, but I'm thankful that we can at least connect through the social media medium here that we have. And uh, yeah, just some thoughts about um, the way things are with the uh, the lockdown and everything, um, it was kind of strange when you do go to the store that you don't see a lot of the things that are kind of distracting about Easter, like candy and Easter eggs and and uh, those kind of things. And it kind of makes, it, for me, it's been a more of a pure form of Easter where I can really focus on on what Jesus really did for us and what God did through Jesus and the power of the Spirit and how all those three work together in this. It's a story of the gospel. The story of the gospel is fuel for our Christian life. It's like when I need power on my mower, when I'm mowing thick grass in the summertime, I got to put the throttle down and the engine gives fuel to the or the the engine gives gas more gas into the into the engine so that I have more fuel and that's what this story does to our Christian life and also it's evidence of how much God the Father cares about you and um, that he gave that Jesus came in the form of God in the form of a man and yet he was God and died and rose again um, it shows how much he cares about you our prayer this morning is that what you're watching or hearing, that you experience, uh, that this experience will bring you closer to God, and that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can live in you and help you overcome whatever problems may be bringing you down. So that's our prayer this morning with this program, and um, there's going to be some scripture readings, testimonies, and some singing. And um, so I'm going to get it started here. I'm going to start by reading Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 7. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. 
He was despised, and we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses, and he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned to our own way, and the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, and like a sheep silent before her shears, he did not open his mouth. Good morning. It's a great joy to sing Easter songs, and we'd like to have you all help us sing. You all, wherever you are, in your living room or wherever you happen to be seeing this, we want you to help us sing. And I'm going to lead this song just like I usually lead songs, but I ask uh, these good friends, Willie and, and Miriam and my wife, to help fill out the parts so you can hear the parts as you sing. And if you have um, any of the songbooks, uh, the Men on a Hymnal, it's number 566, or in the, in the uh, black book, it's uh, 802, you can turn to it. But I think you'll know the song from memory. It's Christ Who Left His Home in Glory. And so, help me sing. <clears throat> Christ who left his home in glory and upon the cross was slain. Now is risen, no tell the story that the Savior lives again. Hail to the King, the mighty hero, tell him of the strength of his bound. John 3, 11 through 15. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
John 20, 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciple went away, disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid them, laid him. Now when she had seen this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples what, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, alleluia. Rejoice, joys and triumphs are, alleluia. Sing ye hymns and earth reply. 
to save. Loud was the chorus of angels on high, the Savior hath risen and man shall not die. Glory to God in full anthems of joy, the being he gave us death cannot destroy. Send were the life we may part with tomorrow, if tears were our birthright and death were our end. But Jesus had cheered the dark valley of sorrow and bade us immortal to heaven ascend. Lift then your voices in triumph on high, for Jesus hath risen and Good morning, church. I miss you. When JR asked me to give my testimony or share what Easter means, it was like, let somebody else do it. But you know, Paul says we need to give a testimony, testimony in season, out of season, and this is the best time of year for testimony. Um, I have to think about a verse in Timothy. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. I think that's what we need right now with this coronavirus going along. Let's uh, have the power of Christ reign in us. And Easter, when I compare Easter and Christmas, it's Christmas is all about family and food and good times, but Easter is a lot more serious. It actually means more to me than Christmas, um, the death and the resurrection. That is the gospel. The blood that he shed on the cross that cleanses us from all sin and from all guilt. And when I think of the Old Testament, when they shed the blood from the sheep for their sins, they still did not get rid of their guilt. In Christ's blood cleanses us from all guilt. The one thing that I had to think about when he was on the cross, when I was reading this week, was as Jesus was being crucified, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And when somebody wrongs us, do we have that spirit within us to forgive them while they are doing it? And I think that is something that I have to take with me is to have a forgiving heart to really be forgiving. And uh, I just want to share that that's what Easter is all about, um, the resurrection, the death and the resurrection that, that Jesus did for us. Hello. Just want to start by saying May the grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you wherever you are this morning or wherever, whatever time you're watching this. Um, <clears throat> how to start. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that written down. I'm not going to read nearly all of it, but uh, I wanted to read specifically uh, from... Uh, the uh, passage in First uh, Corinthians 15. Um, <clears throat> been listening to the Messiah again lately. Uh, really grown to appreciate uh, just the uh, the the beauty of it and uh, and the 
it's means a lot more to me now than before. I just appreciated it for the music, but I'm really, uh, really connecting the message and the music and uh, can't read these scriptures without thinking of uh, Uh, the music that goes along with it. Now I lost my place. You can stop and... <laughs> Cue this up. All right, here we go. <clears throat> uh, first, in, in the Messiah, I, uh, one of the peak parts is the, the Hallelujah Chorus, and it's, of course, very... Uh, well known and one of my favorites, but probably higher on my list of Messiah numbers is the one right after, which is I know that my Redeemer lives. And uh, I like to read that scripture I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, and this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Um, yeah. Okay. So going on, and then after that, that that's the, the uh, that's how the, the uh, that uh, song starts, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and then shifts gears a little bit and goes to, for now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. And then right after that, uh, since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, of course, my mind is thinking in the... Uh, hearing the music to the Messiah as I'm reading these words. And uh, it really connects on another level for me because I can put it to music. And uh, <clears throat> if you've never listened to it, I encourage you to do that. It's, it's powerful, of course. Not everyone uh, enjoys music like uh, our family where it's uh, something, you know, you, a lot of people know my, how musical my dad was, but a lot of my uh, uh, dad is. And, uh, <clears throat> but a lot of my memories of growing up, it was my mom who was the one who had a song for everything. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So that's where my mind is constantly working when I a song comes to my mind with just about everything that, that I'm thinking. So uh, I wanted to read a little bit more yet. This is also from the Messiah. Going on in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And going down to 55, O death, where is your sting? Oh, wait, I wanted to read that part that says, Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um, I 
think for my, my last, I think I'll, I'm about ready to end it here. Is, <laughs> uh, last thing I want to do is read the song, words to a, 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 a hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. I think it's something that we're all, we're all looking forward to, the, uh, that uh, when Christ appears on earth to reign. Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for favored sinners slain, thousand, thousand saints attending, swell the triumph of his train. Hallelujah, Christ appears on earth to reign. Every eye shall now behold him, robed in dreadful majesty, those who set at naught and sold him, pierced and nailed him to the tree. Deeply wailing shall the true Messiah see. The dear tokens of his passion, still his dazzling body bears, cause of endless exultation to his ransomed worshipers. With what rapture gaze we on the, those glorious scars? Yea, amen, let all adore thee, high on thine eternal throne. Savior, take the power and glory. Claim the kingdom for thine own. Hosanna, thou shalt reign in thou alone. And that word Hosanna, that is our invitation to God to, to save us now, deliver us now. And in these times that we're living in, it feels like that is the most appropriate uh, word that we can use, Hosanna. Uh, and that's, that's all I have. So thank you. Good morning. What Easter means to me. For God so loved the world, me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, Kathy, believes in him should not perish, John 3, 16. 53 years ago, on Saturday before Easter, I took that verse personally. I invited Jesus into my heart and asked for forgiveness of sins. And I was baptized on Sunday, Easter Sunday. I've been walking with Jesus since then. Easter is still my favorite day. I love sunrise services. I remember what Jesus did and is doing for me. He died for me. He rose from the dead for me. He is still interceding for me and the, at the right hand of the Father, and he is coming again for me. This Easter is a bit different. We're in the midst of a pandemic. I'm not working or even trying to get the day off. I'm not planning a big family or friends dinner. 
Instead, I've had time to think and meditate on what Easter means to me. I've had time to watch or read more on the Good Friday story and the Easter story. Because of Easter, my life is different. I am saved from eternal death. I have life abundantly. While I am here, yes, even in the midst of trials, I have abundant life. Because of Easter and Jesus' great love for me, I have the Holy Spirit to guide me. What does Easter mean to me? Everything. Well, good morning and God's blessing to all of you. I wish I could see you. I guess you can see me, and I wish it'd be the other way around. But anyway, we're here, and we want to uh, lead in uh, thoughts and worship today. I've appreciated the program thus far. I think uh, we know that singing and music and songs uh, always go well with Easter, and I appreciate uh, the singing and music that was done already uh, for everyone, and the testimonies about uh, Easter and what it means to various people. I believe uh, God was honored by that. And so I'd like to continue to think about what it means for us. I uh, want, I'd like to have you, if you can, Wherever you are, get your Bibles or your electronic device or whatever, and uh, find it, Colossians uh, chapter 3. I know Brother Todd uh, brought a message from uh, 
several messages from this chapter, and I'm just going to be talking about the first two verses, and then uh, there are six verses later on from verse 12 and following that I'd like to refer to. This is, these are, this is a familiar passage, but I'd like to have you look at it if you can uh, in your Bible or, or, like I said, your electronic device. I, I think uh, when you see it and hear it and think about the words, the individual words, it, it helps. So, well, let me say, first of all, I think this is a, a tremendous time to have Easter. This is sort of a special Easter. It's already, already been referred to. Uh, Kathy said something about uh, the uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic, I guess we call it. And that makes things a little different. And I'd like to refer to that somewhat. But uh, let's look at the first two verses of Colossians, where it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Now, that's a message for you, wherever you are. It says, and it doesn't say maybe or something like that, but since you are raised with Christ, since you have been raised with Christ, or the NIV, I'm the King James says, uh, if ye then be risen with Christ, but it's not a question of whether, if, it's just, since you are, this is what should happen. And it says, to seek those things that are above. And, and then it says, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. I'll say a little bit more about that part later, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. But then it says, set your affection or set your, uh, your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So I'd like to look at that as two different things, things above and earthly things. And what are they? Well, when we think about the things above, it already mentions the fact that Christ is seated up there at the right hand of the Father. And that is a very important um, thing for us as Christians, to know that he's there and there's a reason why he's there. I'm going to refer to that a little more as to why he's there and what we already actually sang in our, in our opening song about that. But let's look again at, at also what are the things that uh, are from the earth. Or it says, not on earthly things, or not all or things on the earth. Now, what are the earthly things that we shouldn't set our hearts on? Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't say that we can't have recognize earthly things, you know, everyday living and eating and working and, you know, the things that are, that are material. Not that they're wrong, but we shouldn't be setting our hearts on those things. When we set our hearts on those things, that's when we need, that's where we need to be careful. And this whole thing about if we are risen, let me, let me get to that again. Since you are risen, or if we are risen with Christ. So we need to live the resurrection. Now, I remember a number of years ago, I heard um, a radio speaker who is fairly well known, and you might even recognize uh, who, who it was, but, but he has sort of a high voice, and he said very emphatically, he said, now, Easter is not only about Jesus raising from the dead, but Easter is about you raising from the dead. And I like to quote that because I think he's right. Now, we are the ones that are risen with Christ, it says here. Raised with Christ or, or uh, risen with Christ. So what does it mean to be risen with Christ? And so that's the, that's the positive side. And then the negative. So apparently, the problem is that earthly things tend to block out our ability to think on things that are heavenly. Well, that's why I mentioned the pandemic, because I think there are things 
that we all of a sudden found out that are so important, we thought, to everybody in the world, and all of a sudden, they aren't. <laughs> They've stopped. Things have stopped. You know, travel has stopped. Uh, cruise, cruise ship cruises, flights here and there, many of them have stopped. Uh, games, uh, the sports of various kinds, Olympics, uh, Disney World, it stopped. These are things that, that are earthly things, and the world thinks are important, they're not necessarily bad in themselves, but they're things we should not set our hearts on. And it helps us to see the things that really uh, we can do without if we set our hearts on things above. They can't, we can't have parties, even elections. Well, they've had some elections and some not and so forth. Uh, no school. Church gatherings are limited. Weddings, wow. No, I don't know for sure what Cassandra is going to do, but I think she's going to go ahead and get married anyway. Uh, we have funerals. Yeah. Um, Todd's grandfather just passed away, and so they can't really have a funeral. There will be a little something at the graveside on Monday, I understand. So these are things that have changed, have stopped. Restaurants closed. Maybe it's a good time to lose some weight. Uh, barber shops, uh, you know, beauty salons, and so forth. And we can't shake hands. That I miss that a lot. Shaking hands or hugs or kisses. They are forbidden in the general public, at least. And maybe we uh, we don't know, you know, when all this stuff is is it ever going to return to normal? Or is it everybody going to be germaphobes from here on? Uh, I think some people will be, and uh, some people maybe take it overboard. However, things like hospital visits, nursing home visits, the stock market went down, and uh, people have lost their jobs. Some of them have no wages or income. And so these are things that we face at this time. And so if we're risen with Christ and we're seeking things above and not the things below, we see that we can, we can do without some of these things. There are these new things that have come up. This whole stay-at-home idea, social distancing. I never, did you ever hear about social distancing before? Uh, we, we know there's uh, some, one of the benefits. There are a number of things we could call as benefits. It would be less traffic and cheaper gas. And, uh, it's, yeah, the, the, these things have changed. And then there are shortages, you know, not, shortage of toilet paper, shortage of antibacterial soaps or wipes, uh, the masks, uh, sanitizers, face shields, things all this, of this kind. And so we live in a world that has uh, many things that keep the world going. But we need to find out what things we don't set our hearts on, what things we shouldn't be seeking after the things uh, of that of the earth. Now, <clears throat> I see this as a real opportunity for us as Christians. We have the, op the opportunity now to spend more time with our families. It's a good time to stand, spend more time in scripture, in prayer, in study of God's word, in helping our neighbors, encouraging others, reading good material. I like to get uh, these newsletters from various mission organizations, especially ones in Haiti, but a lot of the others around the world, these newsletters. I get newsletters from all kinds of places, and I read them. I read them quite closely as far as the reporting of what's happening uh, at these various places. I like to know what's going on in the world, and the things happening uh, from north to south, you know, whether it's Canada or South America or, or the Middle East or wherever it might be. Uh, what's going on with God's people as they're working in these various places. Anyway, I had a big stack, big thick stack of those. I was getting behind on reading. And now since the time is different, I've been able to go through the whole stack. I'm caught up. I told my wife last night, what am I going to do now? She said, well, read that book you've been trying to uh, get to. Well, that's right. I got plenty of other things to read. But it's good, a good thing to, to uh, be able to read at this time. I would like to refer to the song that, uh, that I led in the, in the opening. It's uh, uh, 
has a lot of uh, interesting things in it that fit right into this, this whole question. And the song, I want to get it right in front of me here so I uh, don't miss any words, Christ who left his home in glory. It starts with Christ. He left his home in glory. That, tells, that, that says it all in, in some ways. And, and, um, but upon the cross he was slain. That is a big story in itself, just said in a, a nutshell. This is, now he's risen. Tell the story. Think about what we can do. There's a story that we need to tell to the world around us, and now's a good time to tell it because people are listening a lot better, a lot more than they did when they had everything else going at the same time. So now people are listening. Tell the story that the Savior lives again. And then it says, hail to the king, the mighty redeemer. Now this word hail we don't use much, but I guess, uh, you know, there's, they say hail, hail to the chief is a song that's sung for the military or whatever. And, uh, and actually, Judas used this word. He said hail master when he came and kissed him. And he was trying to make it sound like, you know, he's lifting Christ up. Because hail means... Is, a, is like a cheery greeting as to a leader or royalty. And so he was saying, and then they also mocked Jesus by saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they were saying it in a mocking way. But here this song says, Hail to the King, the mighty Redeemer. Hail him who robbed the grave of its power. That's what Easter is about. That's what the resurrection is, robbing the grave of its power. Not only did Jesus rise from the dead himself, but he robbed the grave of its power to all his people. And so it goes on to say, tell the story. And then it says, all is well. Jesus lives forevermore. All is well. That's a message we can also give to the world today. Because it is, you know, it sounds like everything's going wrong. But all is well because God's in control, and God, God didn't miss a beat. He knew what was coming. He knows how to work this through. He knows all the good things that he can bring from this. And so let's be a part of that. And the last verse in this song that we sang this morning is, Christ, our loving mediator, now with God for you and me intercedes. Now that's what our verse said. Uh, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That's where he sits interceding for us. And it's so good to know he's there, no matter if it's trouble. There are people around the world that are starving. There are people with all kinds of troubles, but they know that there is a mediator that is uh, interceding for them when they give their hearts to him. He hears, it says, he hears and answers every plea. I'd like to yet read, in closing, the, uh, a few verses yet in this same chapter, starting at verse 12. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with, and it has a list of things, and the King James says, put these things on. And when you, when you put clothes on, you, it, you know, if they fit, there, <laughs> it's a part of you. It, it's... It, you, you clothe yourself with these things. They become a total part of you. And so it says, uh, clothe yourselves uh, with compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are the things that need to come out during this time of a, of a pandemic because now we have a chance to show the world what Christianity really is. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have with one another. I appreciate how Marv said something about forgiveness is a part of Easter. Um, it says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Uh, and over all these virtues, put on love. Love being the cornerstone, the, 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 perfect, the thing that binds together in unity, it says. And let the peace of God, the peace of Christ, rule in your hearts. This is a day when we can have peace. And a lot of people think they don't have peace, but it says, be thankful. When we're thankful, that helps us to have peace. We're thankful to God. You know, I've heard say that uh, an atheist, the worst time for an atheist is when he 
gets to feeling thankful but has no one to thank. And so we all have someone to thank. We have God to thank for, uh, for all the things he does. For Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatsoever you do, whether it's in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Again, this whole idea of thanks. There's these ideas, forgiveness, the idea of, of telling the world this story. As we think of all these things together, we need to be the ones who share with the world today, with our neighbors, with everyone. I'd like to lead in a word of prayer yet. Father, we thank you that you are the great giver of all good and perfect gifts. We thank you that you are the one that has the power over death. You've conquered death. Not only your own death, but uh, the death for all who uh, give their hearts to you. And we thank you for Easter, for the resurrection. And Father, we pray that our lives could reflect the idea of being raised with you, being risen from the dead, as it were, that we are, we are living risen lives. And we pray that you would bless and guide us wherever we are today, in our various homes or places, we pray your blessing on our church. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother David R., for sharing the scripture with us this morning. And, and as I was thinking about the resurrection of Christ and I want to say to you, Jesus is risen, and you should say he is risen indeed. And I trust you can say that in your homes. He is risen indeed. But what a blessing that we serve a God who has conquered death. And that's what, that's what Jesus did. He conquered death for, for you and I and for all of humanity. I want to thank all those of you that participated in this service this morning. What a blessing to have each of you be willing to serve in this way through singing, testimonies, playing instruments, and reading scripture, uh, and bringing a meditation. Uh, what a blessing to have each of you individuals share in this way. God bless you for that. And you know, we don't just celebrate resurrection on Easter. We should celebrate it all the time. It, the resurrection of Christ is something we should celebrate daily. And we should be a witness of the resurrection of Christ by how we live, by how we live our lives and interact with our neighbors and those we, we work with. I would like to mention a few announcements here in closing. Uh, and you can, if you haven't already, you can go on our website and look at the, the, the bulletin is on our website, Palm Grove Mennonite Church, and you can find our bulletin there with, with more details, and I'm sure some of you have already looked at that. But I'd like to draw attention to a few of the, the details in the bulletin, and one is that this Thursday evening, we plan to have an advisory committee meeting, so all those of you that are part of the advisory committee, uh, we, we have a meeting at 7.30 here. And so make sure and put that in your calendar and make that a priority as we meet on Thursday evening. Also, we had spring meetings scheduled for this coming weekend. And as all of you probably already know, we've had to cancel those meetings uh, probably for a later time, a later date. And so, uh, yes, we look forward to when we can all gather together as a church to share together in, in special meetings and services. And I would like to mention just uh, as well about some prayer needs that we have. And as some of you already know, Mary Kaufman was taken to the hospital, Sarasota Memorial Hospital this past week and she had surgery. Uh, she is still in the hospital. She's recovering. Uh, she's doing well. And so I just encourage you to pray for Mary and for her recovery and that she could come home soon. They're thinking possibly 
uh, Monday that she could come home. Uh, they're not sure yet, but let's continue to pray for her as well as, as Deb Yoder as she is uh, getting cancer treatment. Continue to pray for her, especially as we think of this pandemic and, and those that have compromised health issues. Uh, yes, they need to stay healthy and, and well. Continue to pray for Deb. And as David R. had mentioned uh, that Todd, Pastor Todd's grandfather, Olin Miller passed away. He passed away early Saturday morning. And that burial service for the family only will be on Monday at 1030 in the morning uh, in, in Hartwell, Georgia. And so uh, be in prayer for the Miller family and the Webb family. I believe Todd is, is planning to travel up today for that funeral. Let's pray for his safety as well, and as well for the, the family as they go through this, this time. And I encourage you to go to the, the website to look at the bulletin to see the rest of the announcements that, that we have there. As we close here this morning, I would like to read a verse out of John 11, verse 20, 25, where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. What a tremendous promise that we have as believers that our God has conquered death. And because Jesus has conquered death for us, we also can live. if We commit and entrust our life to him and are true followers of Christ. He has conquered death for us. Praise God for that. We should be the most excited and happy people on the earth. And what a blessing for that. I'd like to close with the, the, the Lord's Prayer, and I'd ask you, wherever you are in your home, to pray this prayer together with us here. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.